Well, we're back here at the Railroad Hobby Show in West Springfield, Massachusetts with Mike Hopkin. Mike is the Director of Product Development for Athern, is going to share some projects that are going on. And uh, first one we're going to talk about, Mike, is the 89-foot uh, flat car. Yeah, what, we've, what we're releasing is we've got a F89F flat car. First deliveries were going to be the as-delivered configurations. The early cars were configured to carry two 40-foot trailers. Original cars were equipped with riser boards. We've got the original trailer train brown paint schemes that had wood riser boards. These are configured in an elephant style where both trailers go the, are facing the same direction. We've got large uh, bridge plates because they, they loaded the cars from the ends at that point. We've got a little bit later versions where we've got the late TTX logos, we've got some with the TT logos. These cars, same hitch configurations, but they also have the steel riser boards and a lot of these cars also lost the bridge plates at that point. So Mike, these are, I think, in route now. You should see those by the end of February, right? I believe so. Yeah, these, this is the first delivery and these are on their way. And then to follow on to that is another version? Yeah, the second run that we're doing is the KTTX configuration of these cars. This is the one of the later versions as the railroads and uh, trailer companies were allowed to make larger trailers. They went to a 45-foot trailer. That then uh, made it to the point where they had to reconfigure the, the trailer hitches on the cars. And so what they did with these is they actually removed the hitches, put on different styles. We actually have a couple different styles of hitches. This, I believe, is an ACF style hitch. We've got a TTX2 A-frame hitch on this car. And what they did is they actually put the hitches at both ends of the cars. And this would then uh, allow two 45-foot trailers to be loaded on the car facing back to back. Um, again, later configurations of the cars, a lot of them lost uh, the riser boards um, at one end. The, the, we're doing one brown car. Uh, we're aware of one car that kept its original trailer train paint scheme even into this later era. So, and Mike, on that car too, there's a little bit something unusual in the decking there. Yeah, what we've done is we've done some weathering on here that uh, the cars would have been originally painted with a white or a cream colored deck. Uh, this car shows the wear of the, the paint coming off. We've got the brown showing through of the body color and then even some rust and some other marking on there to kind of give it a weathered look on the deck. All right, so another project that you announced, we announced not too long ago from Atherton was a brand new SP caboose. Yeah, we're going to be doing, uh, what we're doing here is we've got a new uh, series of Genesis bay window cabooses. We're doing a Southern Pacific C50-4, C50-5, C50-7, 8, and 9. These cabooses are going to be in our Genesis line. We're also going to be doing a, a uh, WP481 class, which is very similar to the C50-9s. Genesis caboose is full uh, interior with lighting, also the bug eye lights on the roof, and on the ends of the, uh, uh, the ends of the cabooses on the later versions will be lit, rotating bearing caps, all the underbody detail that you'd come to expect from a Genesis product, etched walkways, variations on the roof detail. As you can see here, this particular one is the SP Police caboose, which was uh, the these were built mostly out of C50-9 cabooses. These have the RV style air conditioners on the roof, extra spotlights, toolbox detail that were added uh, when they were put into police service. So these will be coming later this year. Uh, be watching uh, later this year for official announcements. Now an exciting project, Mike, that uh, happened recently. We shipped the first round of the SD70 Aces. That was the UP, the BNSF, KCS, and, and the, the Mopac uh, Heritage. And, and the Mopac Heritage. Yep. And then the second run with M-2s is coming. Can you give us a little bit about some of the details of the models and what makes the... Yeah, the what we're special? doing in the second run is we're doing, we're doing one uh, ACE, which is the WP. Each run we're doing one of the heritage units. Uh, and then the balance of the run are all M-2s. We also have, uh, in part of this group, we've got a Canadian M-2, which has got several things that make it different. It has extra louvers back over the dynamic brake section. Also on the rear, different louvers and grill detail on the back as well. Again, the inverter cabinet over the uh, behind the behind the cab has got some different detail as well. And again, the we've got a lot of details on the frame rail and such sanding lines, sanding line brackets in the trucks. We have two different styles of truck side frames depending on the prototype. Uh, other spotting features that you're going to find in our model, we've got uh, see-through radiator uh, uh, fan detail. We've got the see-through grill for the dynamic. We've got see-through grills in the side for the dynamic housing. Also, the uh, blower motor is in there. We've got a lot of the different uh, railroad-specific details, antennas, horns, 
any of those variations that are required for each road name, we also change. Mike, what about cab details? Cab details, we've got uh, a full cab interior. The roof lifts off, it's magnetically attached. And inside the cab interior, we've got a full interior and right down to the dashboard camera. This allows you the ability to be able to put crew figures in there, do any kind of maintenance work, you, work that you need to. And again, it just attaches with a couple of magnets, which will allow it to stay in place for you. One of the things you mentioned was different production runs in the real world can have some variations in the piping. Yeah, on the uh, M, particularly between the M-2 and the Ace, the side frame, the side rail detail of the frame has got, there's different kinds of cabling. Uh, up under the frame, there's gonna be some variations in some of the air filters, bell arrangements, jacking pads change. As you're out looking at these models, look at the prototypes, pay particular attention to all of those very road specific and model specific details. We spend a, a lot of time working on that, trying to make sure that we get all the details right. Well, they look great, Mike. So well, one last thing, a couple of other big projects that are going on for Atherin. One is the U50, and of course the other one is the recently announced GP7. Just kind of give us a quick update on how those are coming. Yeah, U50, and we're actually, we actually have deco samples here at the show. Uh, those are gonna be planned to be shipping in September at the moment, where everything looks good to be able to make that uh, timeline. Uh, Jeep 7 and 9, that has been, that's been recently announced. I do they believe the first announcement just went out. First run will be Pennsylvania and SP Black Widow. This is all new tooling. Uh, in our Genesis line, we've got a, uh, what you would come to expect from Genesis. We've got a GP7, GP9 Phase 2 and Phase 3. We've got multiple fuel tanks. We have a full cab interior, dynamic, non-dynamic torpedo tubes for passenger units. Uh, WP barrel headlights, we have uh, we have the uh, SP uh, lighting package as well available, so pretty much all of the original owner configurations for the body details will be available, and we'll have some other, other variations coming at a later date. So Mike Window, we expect first delivery on those? First delivery should be late this year. I don't, I don't remember what the announcement said for sure, but later this year. Late this year, yeah. all right. Well, Mike, we certainly appreciate your time here at the uh, West Springfield Show. My pleasure. And thank you very much. All righty.